Hey guys, it's Stacy with Miss Scotty Road Trips, and today we're taking a road trip to Fort Fredrica on St. Simons Island, Georgia. Now, St. Simons is an island that belongs to the Golden Isles, just off the east coast, of course, the only coast of Georgia that um, has water on the side. So, but anyway, this was actually considered a town, but a fort that was started in 1736 by General Oglethorpe, James Oglethorpe. And it was basically sat here to protect for the British against the Spanish back in the British-Spanish conflict. So um, they came, don't be laughing at me, Clips over there <laughs> laughing, but I read that so I know my facts. But anyway, this used to be a town and thought we'd come out here. This is where, you know, they lived. This right here was the main road, considered Broad Street. And that was the main road through town. But we're gonna see a little bit, learn about everything, go around, check out the barracks, check out where everything's at. And they also have a cemetery we're going to walk through. So, Let's go. Mm -hmm. Patty went to the Haunted Hotel. Patty thought it was real unusual that there were shells in the walls of the outside of the hotel. And I found this and I thought it was kind of funny. But if you look, it's talking about the walls from refuse. And this is where it's telling how they took the oyster shells and unused building materials and made the walls. And if you look, you can see the walls of this building are made that way. I did not find it unusual because there is so many buildings down here. Cliff just tried to scare me. Yeah, there's so many buildings down here that I didn't think anything about it because I've seen it all my life. But Patty was like, that's really cool. I didn't know they did that. But it is a common thing here in South Georgia. Getting held up, so we're gonna cut across the field and go to the end of the fort. I wanna see what this says. Get to the end of the sightseeing trip and go backwards. That way we don't have people running into us and we can talk to y'all a little bit more and um, show y'all around a little bit more. Now this right here, there used to be a tavern. I guess some of the places are marked and some of them there are no markings on the ground, but this was the tavern of the town. It's a local pub. Wonder if they played darts. <laughs> A new house. A new house? It says the lifespan of Frederica was brief. Most of the ruins you see represent structures built during the town's first 13 years, from 36 to 49 of 1700s. Okay. So this is what is left of one of the houses that was built between 1736 and 1749. And once the conflict was over between the British and the Spanish, General Oglethorpe's regiment ended up disbanding and then the town started just, there was nothing here after the military had left to keep it going. So basically all the buildings are gone you just see where some of them stood. Some of them, there's no marks at all out here. The tavern had no marks. And there was a place called the Flesh Market, which was where they actually butchered their animals to for food. It was a butcher shop, what we call it nowadays. But it was called the Flesh Market back then. There was no signs of it either. This the Flesh Market something different nowadays. Yeah. This was where the carpenter was at. Was the first settler on this lot was Daniel Cannon. He was a carpenter. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Yep. Had to have a carpenter. Yeah, these um, men that were stationed here or lived here actually fought against the Spanish that were in St. Augustine. And we've been to St. Augustine before. Showed you a little bit about that. We want to go back. I love St. Augustine. So. I don't know what road we're on, but I see what used to be an old well, I think. Yeah, that's what they were saying. That's pretty cool. It's beautiful out here. All these big trees. This is Cross Street. I was just getting ready to say that. <laughs> oh, duh, the signs. signs are out there. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. Reminds me of the trees that people used to have in front of their old plantation homes. I wonder if we can come out here after dark. It said it closed at five. Wonder if we can come out here after dark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a gate up there that actually locks. Over here's the barracks. What's left of the barracks. There's really not a whole lot left to it, but if you think about it, we are talking, it was built in 1736. So, 300 years ago and we're still seeing some signs of it that's amazing to me that shows how good the buildings were actually built using the um shells and the concrete and the refurbished stuff so yeah, it's lasted 300 years and it's still standing that's pretty good the town was abandoned the fort in town was abandoned in the 1800s right no it was abandoned like well, they started going out in 1749, and just oh. a few people stayed here because of... Um, so they built this elaborate place up, and then a few years later... Left it, and it couldn't sustain itself because there wasn't enough people left behind to um, live here. There was no money coming in, nothing they could do to bring in the money. Wow. So, yeah, it's a pretty neat place, though. That little piece, like the entrance right there looks like a castle yeah that's the only piece that's, the only that's part left, that left stayed. of the, the barracks rest the rest gone. of it's all gone but still just the fact it's 300 years old that is old all the men living in this barracks and the heat of summer yeah they were saying that they had no windows and that um miserable there was i forget how many men he said in each light little area with no windows to let the air this is what it yeah no windows like. on the outside i don't know if y'all can <clears throat> the windows was on the that. inside there was no windows on the outside where the breeze yeah where the breeze been. could get you that's crazy it had 200 troops were stationed in there now, it says, does say that 200 troops were stationed here. Some of the officers and married men lived in their own houses. So 100 but men here. It could accommodate up to 100 men here, yep. That's just crazy. Yeah. And no air. Have to have AC. You would need it. I would. I could not handle this place without any AC. Guess I'd have had to if I'd have lived back then, though. Check this out, guys. That's a hanging tree, ain't it? That is a hanging tree. This. Who would have put a swing on one of these limbs? Yeah, we, put, we hang on. people. We don't put swings on these limbs. We hang people. <laughs> that was too funny. Look at all the Spanish moss. Standing up underneath this tree, looking up. That's pretty amazing to me. All this moss just hanging around. But you do not want to get that on you because it is a home for red bugs. And they are a pain. They itch very bad. And... From what I remember, because I only remember getting them one time because we um, had played in the moss. You put alcohol in your water, I believe, like in your bath water, and you put alcohol in it, and it helps them to kill them, I guess. 
Might have to, don't take my word for it, ask somebody else because I may be wrong on that. The Keeper of the King stores. Oh look, these were found on the site. Those are actual real things used off the buildings. <laughs> And it's Two a, stories. Is that it right there, what it looked like? Yeah, it was destroyed by fire. Oh. It burned. It burned. It had a fireplace in it, though, in the corner. Yep. So little, but I guess that was all they needed, really. Please stay out. Yeah, they don't want you messing with the ruins. There's a back well back there and probably where their bed was back in that corner and then this front room was the living room in the kitchen where she cooked using the fireplace and i guess he owned the store he was the oh he done a lot of storekeeper oglethorpe secretary the town recorder and keeper store. of supplies for yep. the storehouse oh okay he was also an arthur Hmm. That's pretty cool. Look how big that old tree is. Yeah, there's a lot of huge trees out here, guys. Look at that. Look at this one. That that's one's the one big you were filming. Too. From yeah, the that's other the side, one we were but... standing under and I filmed up. Yeah, this trunk on this thing is huge. Just to give you an idea, Cliff, stand up beside the tree because I know sometimes it's hard on camera to see just how big these things are of course now you're in the dark and let me see in the dark. you're in the dark me. Am I in the light? we're going to the light go to the light Ooh. now you ain't going into the light because I ain't ready to lose you yet get in the middle Look at that, guys. Look how much shows around him. It's almost as wide as his arm span. And now Cliff's 6'4". So that tells you how big that tree is. That's just crazy. Crazy. Okay, here's some more ruins. Let's go check them out. I am trying to hold my camera more still. I know that some of y'all were complaining about that after... Um, the video of the shadow cemetery and I'm really trying but please remember before you get mad at me and don't stay with the channel because you think it's poor filming I have been sick I've been using different cameras I'm not trying to make excuses I do need to hold it more steady but at the same time when you're used to filming with one camera and it breaks and then you're trying all these different cameras and the weight's different. It is hard to kind of keep it right. So hopefully that'll get straightened out in time now that I'm getting, I've got my new camera. And also since it's been a little while since surgery, you know, I'm not as weak as I used to be. So hopefully, hopefully. Okay. What is this? Oh, geez. I'm not sure. This guy was, he's supposed to be the town policeman. He is a coachmaker by trade. Apparently, Oglethorpe did not like him. Apparently not. He couldn't sell iron goods. Or make chassis for the coaches. He couldn't work in his garden. Nope. And. A potman beat him up. Under Oglethorpe's orders. And the soldier. And he was the. Town police. Town officer. policeman and the soldiers were ordered to ignore him. He went to Charlestown. It says it doesn't show why he had so much trouble in the records, noting only that he was persecuted out of the colony. Hmm. A government servant shot six of his hogs. When they got, when loose, they in got loose in town. Yeah, I don't think he was very well liked. No, uh, he wasn't. Hmm. They wanted him out of here. Yeah, they were ready to get rid of old Sam Perkins. There's your orange tree down there. The shade of that big Oh, tree. okay. We'll look at this and then we'll walk down there. Yeah. They was, the fort will be. Yeah, we're trying to wait, guys, for the fort. There's people down there and... 
I don't want to share y'all with them. So I'm keeping y'all to myself. Oh, the bar and the doctor. Same place. Oh, well, that's good. Get drunk, and then he can operate. Which probably happened. I gotta see if the well's open. <laughs> the Reverend Charles Wesley called this popular and industrious man who was the tavern keeper and the doctor my good Samaritan. <laughs> right here, they had a tavern and they had a doctor's office connected into the same building. But the two men, the barkeeper and the doctor, couldn't stand each other. So they would fight all the time. And the reverend of the town actually liked the barkeeper. He was more on the barkeeper's side. But the reverend couldn't, or the barkeeper couldn't get along with the doctor, so the bartender left town. He said he had had enough. There wasn't enough alcohol to deal with the doctor. <laughs> Check this out, guys. That's an old tankard, an old cup, mug, whatever, that was found out here. That was part of the bar. And it says, a portion of a Delft ointment jar. I'm not sure what Delft ointment is, but... Probably from the doctor. Yeah, it's probably something from the doctor, but that's pretty cool. They found that out here. Ooh. All right. Uh, yeah, you want to go to the orange tree or go out to the fort? Let's go to the fort since nobody's out there because right. we've been trying to take y'all out here. There's not a whole lot left to it either. Just the, magazine. Just the magazine part. This is where they would guard the town and they would, were protecting um, this area from the Spanish that come up on the waterfront. It's a lot of marsh out here, but we were also told that the water is over 30 feet deep. So... It would allow for their big boats and stuff to come in, especially if they needed supplies within the town and had somebody bringing the supplies to them. But, but any boat, pretty much. Yeah. At least back then, anyway, they wasn't drawing that big of a draft. It's pretty neat. I said the magazine's the only part left. Okay, for those that don't know, when I say magazine, that's actually where they stored all their ammunition. So, anything from musket balls, cannonballs, any of that kind of stuff, gunpowder, all that would have been kept in this area. There's another well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the shade is pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can yeah. feel the temperature difference. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, they like this where they're at because That's, of the way the river bend was. So there's the open ocean. There's Sydney Yeah, Lindia that way is the open ocean. Over. There's the St. Simon's Bridge we yep. came over. And they could defend this place from either way because of the bends in the river i'm gonna show y'all walk around here and show y'all what i'm talking about but so this bend up here they could fire at if a boat come around or if one come around over here so it's like a perfect place to protect and these were the cannons That they have that, that. Yeah, they have seen. Here's some more over here. <laughs> they have seen some better days. And I will show y'all inside. Yeah, because it's going to be cooler in there. It will be, but it may be dark and I don't have my flashlight. Okay. <laughs> I'm going into the AC. Oh, please stay out of historic ruins. Cliff. What? I can't read it. I know. No, I don't speak for it. I bet you this would be cool after dark. It probably would be cool. 
Probably ain't no telling what you would hear out here either. We might have to come up here. That would be cool. Sneak out here after dark, check this out. Yeah. He could get in one, I could get in the other one. Let's see who lasts the longest. Well, that would be easy. I'd go it sleep. It would be me. <laughs> So, Take a map. <laughs> this remnant is all that time has spared of the citadel of the town of Frederica, built by General Oglethorpe, 1736, as an outpost against the Spaniards in Florida. That's colonial dames of America. Yeah, okay. that's pretty cool, guys. Magazine. This is the powder magazines. These two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then you had the entrance, which was this tall thing. Mm -hmm. And then you had other stuff built that away. Yeah, the entrance would have been right there where that yep. wood's coming out. That would out. have been part, yeah. Yep. It's no longer there, so, but. And so those two brooms is all that's left. Just the powder magazines. That's cool. I bet the people who lived here like days like today when the wind's blowing a little bit. Since this brick rectangle marks the site of the north storehouse, it was a three-story brick and timber structure with a flat tarred roof. And that's where ships, cargoes, uh, food, tools, weapons, and other provisions were stored here. It doubled as a courthouse and a church. <laughs> a little bit of everything. <laughs> it is estimated that it included 20,586 pounds of meat, 15,980 pounds of rice, and more than 8,000 gallons of wine. Of so. The wine was more People important. People still like to drink back then. <laughs> the wine was more important than the meat. We're not the only ones that drink. Everybody drinks. That's funny. Yeah, the wine was more important than any of the food, huh? Orange trail, Yes, orange. But it's not eating orange. It's more. Uh, it's sour. It's real sour. It, they marinated meat with it back in the day, and some people garnish drinks and stuff with it. So, yeah. Yep, guys, that's an orange tree, but it's not edible. Well, you can eat it, but they're very sour. So. All right, guys, this is the old cemetery where they buried the people who passed away at, at here. So these graves are actually over 300 years old. These people would have had to have died between 1736 and 1749. Now, I'm sure there's probably a lot of unmarked graves out here because oh, yeah. one, two, three, four, five. I'm only seeing five now. It does look like some are bigger. And that one looks like you can walk down into it. Looks like it has a doorway that's open. Of course, Cliff went in there. In here. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's somebody. Might not be a, a living, breathing somebody. Oh, there is a walkway. Cliff wasn't a bad person. I thought he had cheated and jumped the fence, but there's a walkway. Which I don't know. This, this is made kind of like one of those bunkers that we saw 
where they kept the um, ammunition. I guess there's one or two people buried in there. I don't know. These are... I don't know how they did it. I would want to be in the big one. Yeah, I don't know how they did it because... My fat butt wouldn't fit in there. That would be it, know. right? I, I don't know how... That's a trip. Some of it's broke off. I don't know if these had a top. If these look like a mausoleum at one time. I would assume that's what they... Like this one would have been built up and since... Yeah, I mean, you're talking 300 years since I, this was done. Yeah, I don't think they buried them underground here. I think that's what it was. They encrypted them in that. It's kind of weird how the bottom of these two are white and then the top is more dark gray. Oh. I mean, it, I don't know why it's doing that. Yeah, I'm not sure on that. I know that the weather can create it to be different <laughs> colors, yeah. but... That one over there is all white on one side. Yeah. Hmm. Must be something to do with the weather. That's a big one over there. Yeah, they put a lot of them in that one. We can go out. Yeah, road. I saw that. I didn't know. I don't. I don't like walking across here because I don't know if people are buried here. But I guess if they were building that big of a monument, then there would well, probably be something remaining. Could very well be people buried here. But yeah. I think they've been walked on before now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This is the natural grass, right? Yep. This looks like St. Augustine. Yeah, it does. This is what people want in their front yards everywhere. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I guess that concludes this video to Fort Frederica. I hope you like it. It's something different. Just look around. It's on St. Simon's Island. It's a nice place to visit for like a weekend trip. It's a good getaway especially if you like the beach and i'm gonna have a few more videos from here either you've already seen them or depending on when i release them you'll either already have seen them by the time this comes out or this may be the last one i don't know but anyway hope you enjoyed it if you do give it that thumbs up as always if you haven't subscribed do so and do all that YouTube stuff. Cliff's looking at me like I'm stupid. So he kind of <laughs> throwing my thought off. <laughs> all right, guys. Love each and every one of you. Bye.